welcome to Land of Enchantment Living. My name is Maria. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you. So guys, I have another Dollar Tree Thanksgiving feast video for you guys. Now this video is going to be very different from my first one because I am going to attempt to make this entire meal using mostly all Dollar Tree items and making everything from scratch. And if you are new to my channel, a little bit about myself, I love Dollar Tree. I visit that store at least twice, maybe three times a week to see what they have. And I also love cooking, decorating, crafting. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video because I did take a lot of time and effort planning this menu. So once I went to, to my Dollar Tree, oh, and I have to mention, I did go to three different Dollar Trees. They are all very close to each other. They're about um, like less than five minutes from each other. So they are all very close. Once I saw everything that they had in stock, that is when I came home, planned my menu, looked up a ton of different recipes, and then I also modified a few of them to accommodate the items that they do have in stock at Dollar Tree. So let me go ahead and go over the menu with you guys. I have it written down here in my little notebook. Um, okay, so I will be making a apple honey glazed ham, um, some mushroom dressing. Now I call it dressing because even when I make my Thanksgiving dinner, I never stuff the turkey. I always make the dressing and then um, bake it in a casserole dish so let me know in the comment box below do you guys call it dressing or do you guys call it stuffing and i will also be making a broccoli and cauliflower casserole some macaroni cheese mashed potatoes gravy drop biscuits and for dessert i will be making a pumpkin spice cake with a cream cheese frosting now for the pumpkin spice cake i did do a lot of research with this cake because Dollar Tree no longer carries eggs and I will be using applesauce as a egg replacement. So this cake is going to be a little bit of an experiment and I really hope it turns out. But over here on my kitchen counter are the items that I purchased from Dollar Tree. Let me go ahead and show you guys those items real quick. All right guys, here on the counter, I have the items that I will be using for this Dollar Tree Thanksgiving feast. And I do have to mention, I did not set a budget for this video, but if you guys would like me to make another Thanksgiving feast video on a budget, let me know in the comment box below. So the items I did not purchase at Dollar Tree because I already had them in stock were, of course, some spices. I had this pumpkin pie spice, salt, pepper, baking soda, baking powder, and one of the items that they did not have in stock yet was um, pumpkin puree, but they do carry pumpkin puree. They just had not gotten it in stock, so that is why I had to go ahead and get the Libby's brand, and I believe this is um, this was two twenty two. dollars um, so you guys can use any pumpkin puree, so that is everything that I will be using for this video. So let's go ahead and get started with making some veggie stock because I did not buy any pre-made stock. Like I said, I am going to try to attempt to make this entire meal making everything from scratch. All right guys, I'm going to go ahead and start by making the veggie stock. That way it builds a really nice flavor. I'll be using about two tablespoons of the imperial um, spread. A teaspoon of the garlic. So this seasoning blend comes with onion, celery, red and green bell peppers, and parsley. I'm keeping this like at a low heat because I don't want that garlic to burn. I don't know, I think I'm going to add a little bit more garlic. I want this stock to be very flavorful. Okay. 
and I think I'm going to use about half of the seasoning blend. Let's see. I'll put about half. I got this salt free seasoning um, and it has granulated garlic, minced onion, orange peel, black pepper, crushed red pepper, parsley flakes, and lemon oil. Put some of that in. And salt and pepper. So now that my veggies have sauteed, I'm going to add some water to it. About four cups of water. I'll have about four cups of veggie stock. I'm going to keep this on low. So it could simmer and then next we are going to work on the bread for the dressing. Okay guys, so I went ahead and turned the oven on to 320 degrees so I could toast up the bread for the dressing and this is again Dollar Tree so I am just going to take some of these slices probably all of them and dice them up and I forgot to mention that I am cooking for a family of three because it is only me my husband and my son but i think this will easily feed four people so i'm just gonna go ahead and dice up my bread to little cubes and then i will place them on a um cookie sheet i oh, lost a piece um oh i lined up my cookie sheet with some aluminum foil for easy cleanup and you can make the cubes as small or as large as you want I think that's going to be enough. So as you guys could see, I didn't even use the entire loaf of bread. I said I could use that for peanut butter and jelly. Okay, so here's the cookie sheet. And I am going to use some of the vegetable oil for the bottom. Let's pour a little on there. I'm going to put the breadcrumbs in a bowl, a mixing bowl. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of the vegetable oil and season them before I put them on or before I put them in the oven to bake. Let's 
just tones on a little bit of this oil. The salt free seasoning. A little bit of that. Seasoning actually smells really good. A little salt. And a little pepper. Need a little more of the vegetable oil. I'll bring my sheet over and I apologize guys for this lighting the lighting in here has been really weird it's a little cloudy today and then the Sun comes out and the clouds go away so ahead and put these in the oven and I do want to keep a close eye on them because I don't want them to burn. I set the oven at 325. I do want to scrape all of that yummy seasoning on the breadcrumbs. Into the oven. Okay guys, so next I'm going to be making the pumpkin spice cake. I got this recipe off of a book that I um, bought off of Amazon. I will leave that book linked in the description box below and I did modify this recipe to go with the items that I found at Dollar Tree. So let's go ahead and start with the flour. It calls for one and three quarters cup of flour. This recipe calls for two teaspoons ground cinnamon, one teaspoon ground ginger, a quarter teaspoon ground nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of ground clove. But what I'm going to use is just the Trader Joe's pumpkin pie spice because it has all of those spices already. So I'm just going to be adding about three teaspoons of the pumpkin spice from Trader Joe's. So that's one. So I have the baking powder and baking soda from Trader Joe's, but Dollar Tree does carry baking soda and baking powder. I did not get it from, uh, from Dollar Tree because I had already purchased mine from Trader Joe's a couple weeks ago. 
So we need one teaspoon of baking soda and one and three quarter teaspoon baking powder. One teaspoon. Where's our baking soda? And I think I'm going to have to get me some new measuring spoons because some of them are missing. I don't know what happened. Okay, I have one and three quarters teaspoons of baking powder. So. so if a recipe ever calls for three quarter teaspoons um, or cups, all, all you do is measure out half a teaspoon. and a quarter teaspoon and that gives you three quarters so there we go we got that now we need salt and that is one teaspoon of salt salt This cake smells really, really good already. Got the breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are looking nice and toasty. I'm keeping an eye on them because I do not want them to burn. Okay, so we combine a flour, brown sugar, cinnamon, baking powder, baking soda, salt, the pumpkin spice blend, and we mix this well. And that is when we add our egg replacement which is the applesauce okay, this is a good mix go ahead and add our pumpkin and it calls for 115 ounce can of pumpkin puree Remember, I could not find my pumpkin puree at Dollar Tree because they hadn't gotten it in stock. So I went ahead and got the Libby's for $2.22. Add our pumpkin. I'm actually taking that entire thing off. So a little bit of cheating here with the pumpkin. This is not from Dollar Tree, but it's okay. If you guys have it at yours, definitely pick it up because $1.25 is a really good price. Okay, pumpkin puree is in. And next, we need our oil, and that is two-thirds cup of oil. Vegetable oil from Dollar Tree. Add it out. Check on these breadcrumbs. Looking toasty. I'm gonna give them about five more minutes. Okay, put this way. Now for our egg replacement, I'm going to be using the applesauce. And let me look at my notes because I can't remember how much I use. Okay, so it is a quarter cup of applesauce per egg, and this recipe calls for four eggs. Ooh. Okay, let me get this cleaned up. Okay, 
Okay, so we're going to measure out a quarter cup for every egg. So that's one, two, three, and four. So this is our egg replacement. Now this recipe calls for, uh, let's see here, I believe, oh, a cup of raisins. I am not adding raisins because we are just not a big fan of raisins. So I will be leaving that out. I think what I'm gonna do is gonna And I already have my cake pan prepared. I went ahead and added a little bit of the imperial spread with um, some flour to prevent it from sticking. And the pan I will be using is a 13 by nine inch pan for this cake. All right guys, I had to take the breadcrumbs out of the oven because they were starting to toast up a little more than I wanted to, but it's fine. I'm going to go ahead and set these aside to cool. Okay, here is the prepared dish. Let's go ahead and add the cake to this. Get to every last bit of it. Don't want to waste any of the batter. Okay. I'm just going to smooth this out. Now I am going to go ahead and put this in the oven and we are going to bake it at 350. Okay guys, so next it's time to make our um, cream cheese frosting for the pumpkin spice cake. And I decided to go ahead and make it now that way it could be nice and smooth and fluffy, ready to go for whenever my cake has been cooled. So for this recipe, I am going to be using one eight ounce block of cream cheese. One block of the cream cheese. One stick of the imperial butter spread. One cup of the powdered sugar. going to be using one teaspoon of the vanilla extract. Actually it's two teaspoons of vanilla extract so let me go ahead and add other teaspoon.
Alright guys, our frosting is super creamy and smooth. I think it's perfect and looks so delicious. I'm going to go ahead and transfer it over to a little airtight container. Okay guys, it is time to take the cake out of the oven. It smells so, so good. I did poke it with a toothpick and it came out clean. All right, and here is the pumpkin cake. Doesn't it look so good? And it smells really, really good guys. Now it's time to just let it cool down and next we are going to go ahead and work on the broccoli and cauliflower casserole. Okay guys, so for the broccoli and cauliflower casserole, I will be using the winter blend from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two bags. And I found this recipe on, I think it was a Pioneer Woman's, yeah. Um, website. I will leave that recipe linked in the description box below, but I will be changing a few um, measurements. So let's go ahead and get started with um, melting six tablespoons of butter plus one tablespoon melted butter. Okay, divided. So let's see here. Let me go ahead. Well, I'm actually. I guess I'm not changing a whole lot of measurements, mostly ingredients. So six tablespoons of imperial spread. And it calls for, um, let's see here, half a medium onion, but okay. So instead of the half a cup of onion, I'll be using the seasoning blend with the onion, celery, red, and green bell peppers, and parsley. I might be able to get a little more from my other package. It'll be a little over half a cup. I think that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I have two teaspoons of lead minced garlic. up as I cook. One last next thing. Okay guys, now I'm going to go ahead and add the um, flour. Quarter cup of flour. Ahead and add the baby broth. I'm going to add two cups. It's going to thicken up nicely. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add four ounces of the cream cheese. Already taken it out of the package. Cream cheese. So, let's go ahead and season the sauce with some salt. 
pepper. And paprika. Now I get my paprika at um, Trader Joe's. The smoked paprika, but they do sell paprika at um, Dollar Tree. So keep in mind if you need any spices, always check your Dollar Tree out. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and put the broccoli and cauliflower in this um, microwave safe container and I'm going to microwave them for about five minutes before I put it into the cheese sauce. Okay guys here is the cauliflower and the broccoli. I'm going to go ahead and add it in to the cheese sauce and I could have probably used another bag or gotten another bag but this is going to be just enough to mix everything together. be super cheesy and creamy so here I have one tablespoon of Imperial I'm going to combine it with a third cup I believe of pink oak breadcrumbs this is going to be our breadcrumb topping and I'm not going to bake everything off until I put put um, everything together then I will put everything all at once so one tablespoon of that I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of some Dollar Tree parsley flakes A little salt and pepper just to season them up a bit okay guys so, so here's what I'm gonna do I'm going to pour or get half of this mixture the broccoli and cauliflower mixture into the baking dish That looks like about half. A little more. It smells really good. Okay, then I'm going to spread or top it with a little bit of the Mexican blend shreds. just a little put the rest in the mixture and spread this out I'm gonna add a little more cheese to the top Sprinkle more cheese you can make this as cheesy as you want I'm going to go ahead and top it with the breadcrumbs I'm going to go ahead and cover this with some aluminum foil until it's ready to go into the oven along with everything else.
right guys let's go ahead and get started with the dressing I have six tablespoons of the imperial spread here and then I'm going to go ahead and melt that down and then I will add the seasoning blend along with I'm not just I haven't decided if I'm going to use two jars or one jar of the mushroom pieces and stems but I am going to drain this uh, liquid out And this blend comes with onion, celery, red and green bell peppers, and parsley. Guys, here's our mushrooms. I did go ahead and drain all that water out. And all that liquid out. all together okay so I'm gonna go ahead and season this with some salt and pepper a little bit of garlic powder Okay, and over here in this pot, I have some water. I'm going to go ahead and bring it to a boil because I'm going to make my mashed potatoes in this pot. Um, a few months ago, I saw a reel on Instagram where somebody made some mashed potatoes out of potato chips, Lay's potato chips, and then another reel, somebody made mashed potatoes out of frozen french fries so i got the idea to make the mashed potatoes out of some straight cut french fries from dollar tree so i really hope they turn out just as yummy as they looked on that video i go ahead and add my bread crumbs or bread cubes Okay, mix. And I'm going to go ahead and transfer this into a baking dish. And I am going to go ahead and grease that baking dish with a little bit of the imperial spread. Bit of the stock. Go ahead and transfer everything over. I think that looked good. Okay. Cover this with some. Aluminum foil. Pop it in the oven along with everything else. Okay, a little clip of the behind the scenes. I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, some of these dishes all 
washed and clean. Get the kitchen clean while I wait for that water to boil for the mashed potatoes. Okay guys, the water is boiling for the french fry. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the honey glaze. Um, I am going to be cutting this recipe in half, so, or less than half. Okay, so here I have half a cup of brown sugar, one tablespoon Imperial spread. I'm doing a quarter cup of honey. My little spatula is from Dollar Tree, of course. Okay, get the honey in there. One tablespoon of raw apple cider vinegar. Quarter cup of apple juice. I'm gonna use some of the apple juice from these juicy juice boxes. guys so this recipe called for Dijon mustard I could not find any so I went ahead and got a little bit of the spicy mustard I'm gonna add a little bit of this to give it some extra flavor not a whole lot of mustard a little bit and move mashed potatoes. So here are the french fries for the mashed potatoes. Take a look at these. You guys can see they are cooking up nicely. I'm going to give them a few more minutes and then I'm going to go ahead and drain them, put them back in this pot and then add the butter, milk, salt and pepper, keeping these mashed potatoes really simple and easy. Alright guys, here are the french fries. They are nice and soft and tender. I'm just going to go ahead and transfer them over. I'm going to turn the heat back on. I'm going to start by adding a little bit at a time of the whole milk. Just a little. I don't want these to be super runny. And then a little bit of imperial spread, maybe three tablespoons. Nice and creamy mashed potatoes. So I'm only adding a little bit of milk and butter at once because these french fries are super soft and I didn't want my mashed potatoes to be like super runny. And can you guys hear Bob is drinking water? Safe to add two more tablespoons and a 
little more milk. So for these mashed potatoes, I'm going to add the finer pepper to it because my husband doesn't care too much for the big flakes of pepper. Taste. I think they could use a little more salt. And a little more milk. Just a little. But these mashed potatoes are really, really good. So I'm going to keep these in my pot here to keep warm. It's going to keep them covered with a lid and then turn the heat back on when I'm going to be serving everything else. These are Dollar Tree French Fry mashed potatoes and they are really, really good. Okay, get the lid out. Cover them, keep them warm. Right. Okay, guys, so next I am going to be working on my ham. So I got this idea um, when I was looking up recipes for a honey glazed ham. Um, I came across this little tutorial on Pinterest, um, it was for a charcuterie board and they used uh, salami, pepperoni, and ham to make these really pretty um, roses. So I knew that I could do that with the ham slices from Dollar Tree. So um, that's what they did. They took just like a little champagne flute and they would take the ham and just feed it into the flute like this. Um, see how many I could get. So I knew when I saw that um, little tutorial on that charcuterie board that I could do this with the ham. Oops, let's see here. So how you do? Let's get the slice. I hope I'm doing this right. I will leave a little picture of the jacuri board that I saw on Pinterest. It was so pretty. I will just get the ham, put it in here like so, and then you flip it over and then you get your rose. Look how pretty. Okay, can you guys see that? Okay, so I'm going to use about six slices for each rose. I'm going to go ahead and make them all and then I will show you guys how they turn out once I have them all made. I am going to be taking a little break here in a bit to go pick my son up from school. But I just think they look so, so pretty. And here's another rose. And here are the ham roses. I went ahead and made six of them in case anybody wants extra. So my plan for this is um, just so the ham gets a nice crispy edge, um, kind of like a baked uh, honey glazed ham. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the glaze to the bottom of a muffin tin. I'll put the roses in the tin and another reason why I'm doing this is because I'm so worried that the roses will fall apart like if I put them just on a cookie sheet so I'm going to add a little bit of the glaze to the tin put the roses in and then I will set them aside to bake once I have um, the drop biscuits ready
Okay guys, and next I'm going to go ahead and put together the dough for the drop biscuits. And I will leave this recipe left in the description box below for you guys. One and a half cups of purpose flour. Okay, and then we are going to add seven tablespoons of the imperial um, spread. We're going to set one tablespoon aside to brush on after the biscuits are done baking. I'm just going to take a pastry cutter break the butter down until it looks like some coarse sand. I'm going to put this in here because I need my measuring cup to add half a cup of cold milk. The milk we are going to be using. A little more milk. So all of that flour comes together. I think our dough is ready. I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the fridge to keep cold until I'm ready to bake the biscuits. Okay guys, so next I am going to be working on the macaroni and cheese and I am not going to be making the full um, or the whole 20 ounce box. I'm only going to be using two cups of the macaroni. So for this recipe, I'm going to need four tablespoons of the imperial spread. We're gonna be making a roux for the um, cheese sauce and then four tablespoons of flour. Once the 
Imperial is melted. We will add the flour. Go ahead and add two tablespoons of, or sorry, four tablespoons of flour. get the flour taste better. Okay guys, now that this has cooked down just a little, I'm going to go ahead and add two cups of milk. I, oops, I added a little at a time to prevent any clumping. to the milk. And we are going to let this come to a light boil before we add the cheese. And next, I'm going to go ahead and add two ounces of the cream cheese. Once the cream cheese is melted and this comes to a light boil, I will add in two cups of the Mexican blend shreds. Next, I'm gonna add two cups of the Mexican blend cheese. Go ahead and season the sauce with some salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. Okay guys, so I'm going to go ahead and strain the noodles and then put the noodles back into this same pot along with the cheese sauce. So I did end up 
adding about another half cup of milk to the cheese sauce because it was super thick and I needed it to be a little more creamy and not so thick. So I did add another half cup of milk to the sauce. ahead and grate this little block of cheddar cheese because I want this macaroni and cheese to be super cheesy and I love a crispy cheesy top on my macaroni and cheese. I am going to bake the macaroni and cheese so I'll place all of it into this baking dish before I top it with that grated cheese and then I will go ahead and move on to um, preparing the drop biscuits to bake. For the drop biscuits, I went ahead and got a cookie sheet and lined it with some parchment paper. And then I'm going to drop about two tablespoonfuls of the biscuit um, batter onto the parchment paper. And then these will go into a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes along with the mushroom dressing, the broccoli and cauliflower casserole, and the macaroni and cheese. Once the biscuits are done baking, I'm going to go ahead and pull the biscuits out and then place the ham roses in the oven to bake.
Okay guys, before I put the ham roses in the oven to bake, I want to make sure that I glaze them with a generous amount of the apple honey glaze. And I do want to keep a close eye on the roses because I don't want the edges to burn up because the ham is pretty thin, so I will be keeping a close eye on these. I have the drop biscuits out of the oven and I'm going to go ahead and brush on some of the imperial spread. I have it melted down and I did add a little bit of garlic powder, salt and parsley to that melted imperial. Now it's time to finish off this delicious pumpkin spice cake. I'm going to go ahead and put all of that delicious cream and cheese frosting on top and then just spread the frosting out. Here is a final look at everything now that I have it out of the oven. Here is the broccoli and cauliflower casserole. Those breadcrumbs toasted up nicely. And the apple honey glazed roses. I think these turned out so pretty and I cannot wait to try them. And then I have the mushroom dressing. The last Dollar Tree video that I made like this, I made a um, sausage dressing. So I'm really excited to try out this dressing because I really do love mushrooms. And then I have the drop biscuits over here. They did get a really nice color on them because I did put them in the oven um, for about another five minutes. And on the stovetop, I have those yummy, delicious looking French fry mashed potatoes. And I have the macaroni and cheese in this little casserole dish. I'm going to go ahead and plate everything up. Um, but I do want to mention that the only thing I made that was not from scratch was some turkey um, gravy from a package that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And here we are sitting down to enjoy this yummy, delicious Dollar Tree Thanksgiving feast. And I have to tell you guys, I think everything turned out really, really good. My husband really enjoyed the French fry mashed potatoes, the macaroni and cheese, and the ham. He also did like the biscuits. Now he's not a big fan of a dressing, but I for one thought the dressing turned out really, really good. So I do have to mention that the salt free seasoning that I picked up at Dollar Tree was a little too citrusy for me so you guys could probably go without using that and just season everything with some salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika, any spices that you already have on hand will work well for this meal but like I said that seasoning was a little too citrusy for me that will um that seasoning would probably go really well with like some grilled chicken but 
but not so much this type of meal. Now I know this video was a long one and I truly appreciate you guys. If you're still here watching, please leave me a little turkey emoji in the comment box below, letting me know you guys hung out with me until the very end. I wanted to try to give you guys as much um, real time footage as I possibly could in this video. And I started cooking around 10 30 and we sat down to eat around 5 30. i did take a few breaks um, during filming to feed bob and rosie take them out and then recharge my battery pack and after we finished eating the dollar tree thanksgiving feast i went ahead and plated us a good slice of that yummy delicious pumpkin spice cake and i have to tell you guys this little cake was an experiment because i did not add eggs i added the applesauce as an egg replacement and this cake turned out so good and so moist very very yummy and tasty and at the beginning of this video, I did mention that I was cooking for three people, but I think this meal could easily feed six people by making more ham roses, a total of 12 roses, two roses per person. Now, with that being said, this Dollar Tree Thanksgiving feast video for 2024 is coming to an end. I hope I was able to give you guys some ideas on some budget-friendly dishes for your Thanksgiving meal. Don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button, and leave me a comment letting me know if you'll be trying any of these dishes. I love chatting with all of you guys, and I really do try my hardest to respond to every comment. And I will see you guys next time in the next video. Bye. I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody else. No one will ever take me. No one will ever take me away from you. I promise I will hold on to you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Without you You can take me high Feels like I can fly You can take me high